Welcome everyone. Finally, I will show you how to make a waistcoat. How I made this waistcoat, to be precise. Matching the tweed trousers I already made in another video. Chop chop now! Okay, first you need a pattern. You can use one of the waistcoat patterns from our sewing book, but I also put a link to a free waistcoat pattern in the video description. This one is not historical though, and I cannot at all guarantee that the corresponding size will actually fit you. The pattern should look like this. A front piece and a back piece. As you can see, we will need to cut the front piece in half later on. I also altered my pattern by adding a round lapel as well as giving it an almost straight edge. It still has a slight curve as you can see here. I followed the style of this late Victorian waistcoat at the Met Museum. I chose a sturdy tweed fabric from an unknown mill and I can really recommend thick fabrics for your first waistcoat since they are a lot more forgiving in terms of wrinkles. I need the front piece twice, in full and twice in half from the main fabric. To be able to sew precisely, I'm marking where to sew with basting thread. This takes a lot of time, but it's worth it. Especially when using a pattern fabric, so the pattern aligns along the pieces. Furthermore, I need the front piece twice from the horsehair canvas. Be aware that I do not include the lapel when cutting the canvas because my tweed is already really sturdy and I don't want the waistcoat lapel to push my jacket away if you know what I mean. I need the back pieces four times, as well as the other front half twice from the lining fabric.
After cutting and marking all the pieces, I based the canvas front pieces to the tweed front pieces in several lines. Before sewing the pieces together, I make the weld pockets. For detailed instruction on this, have a look at my other video concerning traditional weld pockets in pattern fabrics. After cutting and marking all the pieces, I attach the front facing to the front pieces on the center line. If you use a coarse fabric, as I suggested in the beginning, you also need to think about some top stitching to get a crisp edge everywhere. You can do this with a running stitch, a running back stitch, or by machine. Again, your choice. Then I attach the front lining to the front pieces on the arm side. I'm pressing all the seams and then I'm pressing the seam allowance of the front lining inwards so I can attach the lining to the facing with a cross stitch. I'm using a cross stitch in order to retain some movement in the front pieces. Now for the back, and I'm showing you this on another waistcoat I made without a lapel because it's easier to understand here. I have four pieces for the back. Left and right on the outside, left and right on the inside. There are different approaches to assembling the back and attaching it to the front pieces. Traditionally, you would assemble the whole inside out, leaving a small part of the inner back seam or at the neck here open. When you do it like this, you can attach the back to the front pieces inside out. Turn everything through the gap you left here or here and finish set gap here or here with a blind stitch. This way you don't see any seams from the outside. If you're in a rush or lazy like me, you can also assemble the back without leaving a gap. Then press the seam allowance here, 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 as well as here to the inside and finally attach the back to the front pieces with a top stitch, as you can see here. I think it's easier to get a nice result like this, and I really don't mind those visible seams here and here. However, it's your choice. 
The only thing left to do now is making the buttonholes and sew on the buttons. Either your pattern tells you where you need to put them or you can just distribute like four or six buttons evenly, depending on the length of your waistcoat. For detailed instructions on proper buttonholes and buttons, have a look at my video on said topic.